I'm David Ya. Yeah. David Ya. Yeah. Welcome. Um, I'm going to share with you my testimony right now. Ya yeah put it on my heart through the Holy Spirit to share my testimony. This is totally unscripted. I don't know exactly what I'm going to say, but I'm going to be led by the Spirit as I share. First things first, we're going to look at um, the link on my YouTube channel, David Ya. Yeah. You can go under About and then click on David Ya yeah, Testimony. And that'll take you to this page, which I already had open. I'm going to just close it. And now, this is a website that I didn't create. And I found that uh, there was an article that I had been interviewed back years ago. And it was posted on the internet. And then this website somehow got a copy of it. So what is good about this is that it's actually got my testimony here. I'll read it to us. And uh, then we're going to also do some searches on my name and my former name and we'll see what else comes up so you can make sure you're not misled by uh, the way sometimes Satan will have things go on the internet that's not true and so I'm going to share with you how to do some research to make sure that what you're researching is not uh, going to mislead you into thinking something's true when it's not so as many of you may know my name Ya changed my name to David Ya recently and my former name before that was legally David Christian. Um, and before that, my birth name was Peter Lewis Dash Dominic. That is Peter, middle name, or first name Peter, middle name Lewis Dominic with hyphen between. So Peter Lewis Dominic, last name Facchini, F A C H I N I. I am, uh, well, I don't know about 100%, but I, my, from my parents, uh, I, I'm a, a, from what I know, as far as until I do a DNA test, which I probably won't ever do, um, I've always been told that I'm 100% Italian, half Northern, and half Sicilian. And so, here is the testimony that I had done an interview, and some of it's correct, some of it, there's a couple errors in it, but let's go ahead and see. But here is Dave's pursuit, pursuit of God, from self-centered to God-centered, introduction. From drugs and alcohol to bodybuilding, career building, and back to dangerous addictions, Dave had tried it all. Yet, none of these pursuits filled the sense of spiritual emptiness that seemed to occupy him. Finally, Dave decided to give the Bible a chance, reading it with an open mind. His search ended as he discovered the truth within God's word and the fulfillment he had long pursued. Dave's true story is one of many uniquely featured testimonies from you, the members and visitors of this site. Each story reveals a life transformed by Christian faith. Now, I would say that even Christianity is a deception. Whether you understand that yet or not, go ahead and uh, test all things, prove all things, see if what I'm saying is of, of, of the true and living creator or if it's of Satan or not. Don't just trust what I say or what anyone says. Prove all things, test all things to against the Word of God and prayer. Uh, a life transformed by Christian faith. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull out this tool. I think. No, I don't need it yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, pardon me for interrupting. Each story reveals a life transformed by Christian faith. If your relationship with God I call him a Yah now, since the name's been revealed to me. If, well, I'll just read what it says, and then we'll talk about it later. If your relationship with God has made a significant difference in your life, we would like to hear about it. Submit your testimony by filling out this submission form. To receive weekly messages of hope and encouragement from real-life stories of changed lives 
sign up for e-testimonies. Um, I don't know if I recommend you to do that or not at this point. This is my first time actually reading through this posted testimony that someone else posted because they found my story somewhere else and posted this on here. Um, Dave's Pursuit of God. I was born, when well, I'm just going to read it, and when I find something that's not accurate, I'll let you know. I was born Peter Louis Dominic Faccini on December 10th, 1969, in Detroit, Michigan. I'm an Italian-American raised Roman Catholic. Although our family of five loved each other very much, I always felt I was missing something. I remember always trying to improve myself to earn love and respect from everyone around me. Ever since I can remember, I've been fascinated with searching for the meaning of life. Growing up, I attended St. Michael's Catholic Church almost every Sunday. And that is in Sterling Heights, Michigan. I also read hundreds of books, including the entire Bible, but I didn't really understand it. And since I was taught evolution and humanism in public school, I didn't even believe God existed. Good boy. I was an above average student throughout my public education and attended Henry Ford II High School in Sterling Heights, Michigan. My studies included honors English, physics, and pre-calculus. Teen Rebel, at age 15, I tried to fill the emptiness I felt inside with sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I started smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol. This soon led to smoking marijuana and taking many other harmful drugs such as cocaine, mescaline, and LSD. At age 16, I shaved my head into a mohawk haircut. I thought it was so cool. But in reality, I was mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually unhealthy. At six feet, two inches tall, I only weighed 135 pounds. Body centered. After being sick in bed for about two weeks, I read a book called Arnold's Bodybuilding for Men by Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger. So in 1987, I decided to try a new drug bodybuilding steroids. I read everything I could about scientific bodybuilding. I was working out almost every day and quickly gained about 60 pounds of muscle in only one year. Since I weighed a ripped 100, well, it was probably muscle and mo a lot of water weight. Since I weighed a ripped 195 pounds, I entered two bodybuilding contests in Michigan and won fifth place in both competitions. But that was fifth place out of five, so I was reality in last place out of both. Respect centered. I thought I had discovered the answer to all my problems. As I became stronger, women became more attracted to me. Everyone started liking me and wanted to be my friend. It was a dream come true. I was finally popular, but for some strange reason, I still felt empty inside. I soon found myself not only addicted to steroids, but also addicted to cigarettes, alcohol, and other drugs again. Money-centered. At a, rather, around age 20, I wanted money and success, so I started studying self-help books like crazy. By age 24, I had read more than 500 books by authors such as Tony Robbins, Stephen Covey, Deepak Chopra, John Gray, Barbara DeAngelis, Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar, and Jay Abraham. I wanted to share the so-called the so wisdom I had discovered, so in 1994, I wrote and self-published a self-help book called How to Gain Love, Respect, Happiness, Health, and Wealth. Personal Perfection of Your Mind. Today, I don't believe most of what I wrote back then, so I plan to rewrite and retitle the book Helpology. Actually, since then, I had wrote a book. I didn't rewrite that book, but I wrote another book called Dave Christian's Helpology. I'm actually the founder of Helpology, which I don't recommend at all anymore. So we'll look at some of those, we'll search for it, and we'll see some websites that are out there that still have it. And I don't recommend it at all, okay? I recommend the Et Sefer, Sefer 
Bible, the dedicated book, the divine book or dedicated book. And also the hallelujah scriptures, if you can get those. I used to recommend the King James Bible. I was a King James onlyist for about a year. Um, but uh, I see that that's part of the Roman Catholic system now. And I would highly recommend researching what I'm sharing with you before you get uh, trapped in the system known as the King James Bible. Now, I'm just going to continue on. And uh, if you're a King James onlyist like I used to be, you probably shut this video off by now. And that's okay. You don't have to receive this if you don't want to. If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. My role models in life were Tony Robbins and Oprah Winfrey. I wrote an acknowledgement to Tony Robbins in my book saying, thank you for helping me learn how to help myself and others. Moreover, my unrealistic goal in life was to become the most helpful person of all time. Little did I know the Bible says if you really want to gain knowledge, you must begin by having respect for the Lord. And that's not even what it says. I think it says uh, fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fear of the Lord. If you don't have fear of the Lord, you don't even have any true knowledge yet. For a short time, I quit smoking, drinking, and doing drugs. I was so proud of myself. Proud. Pride. Evil. But now, one of my main problems was I actually believed I was better than everyone else. Little did I know, the Bible says, if you are proud, you will be destroyed. If you are proud, you will fall. Proverbs 16, 18. Scripture actually says, uh, I think, pride come, cometh before the fall. Uh, which I do use uh, uh, King James verses as part of of uh, verses that are in my heart it's just um the name of god yah and the name of our messiah or mashiach is not jesus christ it is yahshua which again you can study some of the other videos i put out to understand that uh, but that is that yah is salvation his name yahshua means yah is salvation and so by hiding the name of Yah, it hides all the other things that the Word of God will reveal to you. That's why it's so important to get back to the Hebrew roots and the names. Self-centered. I really thought I knew it all. Believing I was the God of my own universe, I became extremely self-centered. And I was proud to call myself an atheist. I had no idea, the Bible says, foolish people say in their hearts, there is no God, Psalm 14, 1. That is, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. So at this point, I thought I was wise and I was a fool. Interesting. Pleasure-centered. At age 25, I, by the way, I'm 47 today. At age 25, I still felt empty inside, so I turned back to cigarettes, alcohol, and drugs, but this time it would get much worse. As a social experiment, I became a bartender, male stripper, the Italian stallion, and massage therapist. Now, it doesn't say there, but I was also a, even though I was straight, I stripped for men to make more money, and I would massage men so I was basically, I became like a male prostitute, but I had limitations on what I was willing to do. But still, it was a lot of rational. I was selling my soul to the devil, didn't even know it, to Satan. And um, when I was a massage therapist, I was, or when I was a, let's call it what it was, a male prostitute. Uh, but again, I didn't like go all the way and stuff. So, but the thing is, is um, there were times when I did things that, you know, just really sick. Uh, and it's like, wait a minute. But my mind was rationalizing, hey, I'm just doing this for money. I, I'm not really gay. I'm straight. And so, but the reality was I was uh, playing with fire. And it's a miracle that I lived through it all. Um, but I was also known as Peter Diamond. Although I still believed there was no God, I didn't realize I was worshiping the God of pleasure. 
by age 27, I had been divorced three times with three children, bankrupt, addicted to crack cocaine for two years, and my health was failing. Now, just so you know, update, now I've been married and divorced six times. I have eight children and uh, definitely on the verge of a second bankruptcy, although I'm not going to be filing for that. I owe, owe over $150,000 in student loans and um, still am two classes away from a master's degree, uh, uh, which I don't. I have a Bachelor's of Science in Organizational Leadership with a minor in Biblical Studies from Biola University. Uh, but I, and I went for a Master's in Business Administration in Management and Strategy from Western Governors University and two classes away from it, and I do not even want to finish it. I don't feel led by ya to finish my degrees. A lot of it, I believe, is just indoctrination and brainwashing to train me to be in Satan's system. And so I have no desire to finish any more formal schooling. Praise Yah. I knew if I didn't change, I would never know my children and soon die a horrible death. At that time, I was a drug addict and starving dishwasher in South Beach, Florida. To survive, I was eating food scraps like a dog off the dirty dishes I was washing. So as a last resort to save my life, I joined the United States Marine Corps for food, discipline, and money for college. Job-centered. During Marine Corps boot camp, I quit cigarettes, alcohol, and drugs by replacing them with physical training and good old Marine Corps discipline. Hoorah! Hoorah! <laughs> Get some, devil dog! Oh gosh, those days in Marine Corps. Ooh, my. <laughs> but after graduation, I was lonely, so I started smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol, and sleeping with many different women again. I'm ashamed to say that by this time I had been with more than 200 women, and over time it's been more than 500, and glory to Yah that I've escaped from that whole system. Um, I'm, um, I'm single, actually separated from my sixth wife, and I'm currently celibate by Yah's grace. Hallelujah. Now I know what Paul was talking about. Sha'al. Okay. Now I thought I was just partying and having fun, but I was really destroying myself. I ended up polluting my mind, body, and spirit in evil ways. This reminds me of what the Bible says in Galatians 6, 7. Don't be fooled. You can't outsmart God. A man gathers a crop from what he plants. Again, that's not scripture. It's, uh, God will not be mocked. Uh, do not be deceived. God will not be mocked. You will reap what you sow. Another chance. On New Year's Eve, 1998, in Pensacola, Florida, while throwing up from drinking hard liquor, I cried, Jesus, please help me. I keep making the same mistakes. When I woke up the next morning, I felt peaceful inside with no desire to smoke or drink. I remember thinking it seemed like God had given me another chance. Although I wasn't a born-again Christian yet, for the first time in my life, I started to think God might actually exist. I also started to realize I could not save myself. Soulmate. As a Marine, I began going to church at Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. But I did not ask Jesus into my heart yet, so I was still very self-centered. One night I went to shoot pool at the game hall on base and noticed the most beautiful woman I had ever seen. She was an adorable 20-year-old Chinese-American wearing blue jean coveralls. I flashed my biggest smile at her. I'm just playing around with you guys. Um, but um, just, to, you know, for fun. I flashed my biggest smile at her, lovingly gazed into her eyes and introduced myself. Hi, I'm Dave. You're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. What's your name? She said, my name is Sabrina. As we talked, she said she was also a Marine going to school there. Later that night, she shared with me that she had been a born again Christian since age, since age 13, and she was still a virgin saving herself for her soulmate. 
I knew a good thing when I saw it, so I immediately began to shower her with attention and romance. We fell in love and married only one month later. By the way, the Bible says, the one who finds a wife finds what is good. He receives favor from the Lord, Proverbs 18.22. But the scriptures say more like, um, the man who finds a wife finds a good thing. He receives favor of the Lord or from the Lord. Wife-centered. Next, I became wife-centered. I called myself a Christian, but since I was in love, I didn't think there was anything missing in my life. But then my wife and I had to go to different military schools. So we did not see each other for about two months. Instead of turning to God for answers, I turned back to alcohol to numb my loneliness. Regrettably, I was unfaithful to Sabrina with three different women in two weeks. When she came to visit me, I lied to her at first because I was so selfish and I couldn't stand to hurt her feelings, but I felt so guilty and I didn't want to keep, her harm, keep harming her. So I eventually confessed to her that I cheated. I cried and told her I wanted a divorce because I didn't deserve her. She was shocked and broke into tears, but to my surprise, she refused to divorce me. Sabrina said God made marriage to last forever and she loved me no matter what. She hugged me and we both cried in each other's arms for about 10 minutes. I couldn't understand it, but for the first time in my life, I felt unconditional love. Later, I learned this amazing love came from God's Holy Spirit. Living inside Sabrina's precious heart, hurting my wife and destroying her innocence and trust was the worst pain I had ever felt. It was her pain that made me want to become a better man and husband. Legal trouble. I tried to quit drinking, but I couldn't. Then I was rightfully punished by the Marine Corps for drinking three beers at lunch during school. I was put on restriction and lost my freedom for 45 days, but it was a blessing from God because it forced me to stop drinking. At first, I rebelled against the Marine Corps and I wanted out of the military. When I told my wife about my ongoing alcohol addiction, she cried. Sabrina thought I quit drinking, but I had been lying to her the whole time. My, to my amazement, she soon forgave me again. Last chance. Sabrina's pain motivated me to start seeking God because I knew I could not be a good husband for her on my own. So I started to scientifically study the Holy Bible to see if it were true. I had been brainwashed throughout my education to believe the Bible was just a myth. But this time I personally tested the Bible by reading it as if God truly wrote it himself. What a concept. <laughs> For the first time in my life, I read the Bible with an open mind and heart. No one ever told me the Holy Bible has been and still is the best selling book of all time. The reason it's not on the New York Times bestseller list is because it would always take first place. <laughs> Based on my research, it became very clear that the Bible is the most helpful product that has ever been created. Nothing else even comes close. So I read the Bible believing God existed, He created me, and He loved me. I patiently waited to see if my research would make a difference in my life. To my amazement, God began to speak to my heart. For the first time, I slowly began to understand God's loving plan to save us from sin and death through the holy sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ, which as we know now is Yahshua Mashiach. Moreover, I started to learn how one God Yah eternally exists as three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But I still wasn't saved yet because I continued to trust in myself to change my life. Born again. Six months later at age 29, only by God's grace, I was finally saved in church at New Venture Christian Fellowship in Oceanside, California. And that was in December of 1998. As Pastor Sean Mitchell had us bow our heads, he asked if anyone wanted to receive Jesus Christ into their hearts. As he led us in a prayer, 
I submitted myself to the creator, I submitted myself to the creator of the universe, my God, my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, which now I'd be very cautious to be praying for Jesus Christ to enter in your heart. That might be a demon going in. And so do some study on that. Again, it sounds blasphemous what I'm saying, but that's the whole satanic trip trap is that you're going to be thinking, oh, this guy's no, not of the Lord. Um, but, you know, keep going and see. Test all things. Find out if what I'm saying is true. Watch some of my videos. Prove me wrong, scripturally. Um, forgiven. When I prayed, tears flooded my eyes as I thought about all the times I came so close to dying. But God had always protected me. As I surrendered my entire will and pride to God, I could actually feel the warmth of the Holy Spirit enter my heart. I experienced God's, I experienced God's pure love and his total forgiveness of my evil past. Now, I do believe that the Holy Spirit did enter me at that point because it did, it was life-changing. Uh, Jesus saves. Now, I'm going to say Yahshua saves. Yah, Shu, Yahshua, Yahshua saves. I knew I was saved because I finally put all my trust and faith, rather all my faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Now remember, God or Yah listens to your heart. He knows if you're being sincere. And if you don't know his name yet, he knows that you don't know his name, but that you're seeking him. So just keep that in mind as you're in your walk with the creator, with your Abba, Father. It was the most important decision of my entire life. About six months later, I was baptized on June 27th, 1999 in the Pacific Ocean by Pastor Ralph Wood of Calvary Chapel, Oceanside. Now, I don't recommend any church building anymore, uh, but, you know, God uses all, Yah uses all things for good for those who love Yah and are the called out assembly according to his purpose. Calvary Chapel has been our church home ever since, and it's not anymore, and this is a long time ago this was written. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord, Joshua 24, 15. Uh, and that is, as for me and my house, we will serve Elohim, Yah. I highly recommend, not anymore, Calvary Chapels or any other church, I don't recommend any church buildings at all, that teaches through the entire Bible as the Word of God and encourages you to live a Christ-centered life. See, I don't even say that anymore. I wouldn't recommend living a Christ-centered life. <laughs> um, I would recommend living a Messiah-centered life. And so you have to do some research and find out what that means. A Torah-centered life. A teaching. Torah does not mean law. It means teaching-centered life. And by having um, the mind of Messiah... He will have you follow his teaching, all his teachings, from Genesis to Revelation. If you don't believe me, do some more research. I was deceived. I'm sharing with you what I've learned. Again, take it or leave it for what you think it is. Christ-centered. Now, again, I'm going to say Messiah-centered. Yah-centered. Yahshua-centered. Thanks to God's grace and mercy, I am now Christ-centered. Again, now Messiah-centered or Yah-centered and very healthy. And that's the case for me now. And that's after this happened. I, got, I had cancer. I had colon cancer. And Yah did a miracle and saved me in the hospital. Um, that alone is something uh, I should talk about. Um, I was in the hospital about two years ago now, and when I had was diagnosed with colon cancer, I couldn't go to the restroom. I couldn't go number two. It wasn't coming out. It was blocked. There was a colon cancer in there about six inches, and it was blocking my whole uh, colon from going to the bathroom. They had to operate, diverted my colon, so I go out of my stomach now. So I'm like my intestinal tract comes out of my side of my stomach, and that's still there. And But it saved my life. And then later they did chemotherapy and a whole bunch of stuff that was going to be, it was killing me and I didn't know it. That stuff was making me worse. But then they went to go operate on my, and there was one time when I remember about two weeks before my operation, they were going to take out the, the cancer. 
And I remember like going to the bathroom and out, like I think I passed it out of my rectum, the cancer. It came out through miracle, prayer. Um, because then when they went to go look for it to operate, they said it was gone. So God did a miracle. I did not have to get that removed. And since then, I've been staying healthy with, believe it or not, Google and research this, and I got links on my channel, living water therapy, which some call urine therapy. Now, you think that's sick or disgusting? You know what? i got to tell you. Look at me. Do I look like I'm 47? Look at my teeth. I don't use toothpaste, mouthwash. I only use urine. And I'm going to tell you, you know what? You're all deceived. If you're not using your own living water, Yah has created that as a, like a fountain of life coming out of you. It's more pure than distilled water. It cleanses and purifies and uh, it just, the, the benefits go on and on. I've got more energy than I know what to do with. If um, I'm not going to keep going on about this. You can watch uh, videos on my playlist under Living Water to read testim hear testimonials from all these other people. That This one lady living 17 years doing this urine therapy, that is drinking her own urine. She's 40 years old and she looks like she's 20. Now, there'll be some websites that try to mislead you. And again, this is Satan's system. Oh, there's no scientific evidence to b b baloney. There's no scientific evidence. Look at the testimonials of these people. If that's not scientific proof that someone tells you, look, from two or three witnesses, you don't need some scientist who's not trying to tell you the truth, but trying to make you think you need their drugs and that you don't need this free product that comes right out of your own body. Look at my teeth, you guys. I don't get them whitened. I'm showing you my tongue. So you can see that it's a healthy tongue. I'm not doing the, um, you know, sticking the tongue out thing like Shiva. I'm just showing you I'm healthy. Um, let me, I mean, I'm just going to show you at 47. You know, this is no, I don't even lift weights, you guys. My muscles are strong. I, I'm able to run, walk, uh, energy. It, it's ridiculous. Uh, this is one of the best kept secrets that Satan has uh, deceived, uh, especially the American culture. You know, we're so blinded by the satanic system all around us to think we need doctors and medicine and drugs. The pharmacia is basically witchcraft. It's uh, pharmacia. It's divination. You're taking a pill trusting a pill instead of trusting Yah. And he's got all everything for you in your own body, you guys. You know what? Some people have done 40-day fasts, urine only. They just loop their urine, they don't drink any water, and they live on it. You tell me that's not... Remember when Moses uh, uh, fasted for 40 days and 40 nights with no food and no water? Now, it could have been a supernatural fast. He could have just ur looped his urine too. And that goes the same for Yeshua when he was in the desert. And so uh, it could be a well-kept secret that, uh, you know, but the scriptures say, Yeshua says, if when you're my disciple, out from your belly will flow living water. You saw in there, and you know, even in Genesis, you've got the, the, the four heads of the fountain that starts out, and the one river's called Pishon, like piss on. I'm going to tell you, Pishon, one of the fountain heads, and it says that from that river, there is gold. What color's urine? Gold. And it says, the gold of that land is good. And then it says, there's onyx stones and bedlam and onyx stones. And so, you know, the stone might be referenced to like, you know, I don't know, the male testicles or something. But in reality, I don't know for sure. But all I'm telling you is, and then there's scripture that says, drink rivers from your, drink waters, waters from your own cisterns. And um, at the very least, I would just say, what do you got to lose? If you already got terrible health. What do you got to lose by trying urine therapy? And if you don't want to try it, then you don't get any of the benefits.
Fear not. And don't be afraid to look into that sun with one eye. Look at this. Watch my video on the Matthew 622 sign. And stare at that sun with one eye. Therefore, if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Stop messing around and let's start. I mean, we only got a couple months left here, you guys. About 80 days or something before some major sign, the, uh, the Revelation 12 sign. Now, I'm not setting dates, but uh, Yah is. <laughs> Yah setting dates. <laughs> so, um, let's continue here. Thanks to God's grace, or Christ-centered. Thanks to God's grace and mercy, I am now Messiah-centered and very healthy. In the year 2000, the Lord put it on my heart to legally change my name to David, Dave, Christian, as a witness to the great change he made in my life. I believe it was May of 2000. That same year, God also gave me the vision to found the new social science called Helpology, the study of the most helpful products and services. As a born-again Christian, I am thankful to say I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, again, I don't love the Lord Jesus Christ. I love the Creator, Messiah, Yahshua Mashiach. Yah. I love my Lord is not a, um, the Lord Jesus Christ. Those three words are not of, of Yah. That is Lord means Baal. Okay. It's satanic. Why do you think there are people in the um, kings and queens? They call themselves lords, you guys. They use the name Lord. Lord Balfour, or whatever. They know it's satanic. We don't. Wake up. Jesus, it's of Zeus, Jesus, and Christos, anointed. All of the pagan gods were a Christ, Christos, or Christs, or anointed. You guys, it's pagan, okay? I'm going to say I love Yahshua Mashiach. <sighs> Sabrina and I are happily married, we're not anymore, and faithfully committed to each other through Christ. Remember, this was written back a long time ago. I love and keep in touch with my son, Tyler, and daughters, Ashley and Amanda, and actually I have eight children, and I do keep in touch and love my son, Tyler. He's 23, he lives here in Michigan. My two daughters, Ashley and Amanda, I'm not in touch with them, they're living in uh, the West Coast, um, I'm not going to get into them too much uh, for their privacy. I do not smoke, drink, or take harmful drugs. Uh, now, that's true today. But since I wrote that, it wasn't always true in between. I received an honorable discharge from the Marine Corps on January 8, 2004. That's true. Also in January 2004, the Lord put it on my heart to develop a website. And this was back before I had Helpology.org. It's no longer a website, and I don't recommend anything regarding Helpology anymore, even though there are some sites out there still that I haven't been able to shut down because I don't have, like, the passwords and codes to get in them. And I don't. it's not even worth my time, actually, to, to try to... i got other things to do that are more important than try to go shut down systems that when I've tried to shut them down, they don't even let me do it because they're like, well, you don't have the password, you got to pay money to get it. And it's like, you know what? I just don't recommend Helpology anymore. Our mission is free help for all. Our vision is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. And our passion is to love God and people. I remember thinking, I'm such a sinner. Who am I to be used by God? And I still believe that, of course. But then the Lord reminded me, who am I to stand in God's way? And he reminds me that still. The Bible says in Acts 5, 38 through 39, If their plans and actions are only human, they will fail. But if their plans come from God, you won't be able to stop these men. You will only find yourself fighting against God. Now that's true. And here's the thing. Let's see about looking that up to get the actual scripture verse. Okay, I'm going to just show you how I do it here. Jump from there to 
the Sefer, Et Sefer, and do some research on the Et Sefer and why. Watch some of the videos. There's one in particular, a video uh, Yah had me make called Blind, called Blind. I recommend watching that. Again, I'm recommending my own stuff just because I know that what I share with you is of Yah. And again, watch it with an open heart and mind. Don't let Satan steal from you before researching something. Watch it through to the end. And then find out. Now, we're going to look up Acts 5, and then we're going to see about 38 through 39 what the Sefer says. Acts 5, 38 through 39. There's Acts 5. Which Acts is called Ma'asim, Acts 5, 38 through 39. And we'll just pop it up here real quick. 38. Actually, what I'll do is this, is I'll highlight it. 38 and 39. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and also bookmark it. No, I don't have to bookmark it. Okay, here we go. Well, let's read the context. After this, I'm going to read at 37. Uh, after this man rose up Yahuda of Galil in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him, he also perished. Well, let's read the whole context. See, we never going to get this. Let's find out what's going on here. So now, okay, this is good stuff here. Wow. Let's find out. Okay, so we're talking about, they're in the assembly when they brought him. Okay, so now they're going to, let's make sure we don't miss anything here. Now, when the high, I'm going to read from 24 and just see where we're at. Now, when the high priest and captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. And what things? Let's find out. You know what? Let's find out what's going on in this whole section here. If you don't like it, click off. You don't need this. <laughs> if you're not willing to dig deep into Yah's word, you don't have much of a chance. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Here we go. Ma'asim Acts 5. But I do love you, and I'm sharing this with you. I'm already, you know, set apart. I'm a called out assembly. I'm not concerned with my salvation anymore. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I'm doing this for you. But a certain man named Chananahyahu, with Kapira, his woman, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his woman also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Kepha, that's Peter, said, Chananahyahu, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Ruach HaKadesh? Now that's the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadesh and to keep back part of the price of the land. While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own power? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied unto men, but unto Yah. And Chananyahu, hearing these words, fell down and gave up his ruach. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men rose, arose, wound him up, or, yeah, wound him up, wound him up, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his woman, not knowing what was done, et came in. Now the word et is divine or dedicated. And so it's just part in scripture where it says this is like divinely came in. And Kepha, Peter, answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. And then Kepha said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the et ruach Yahuwah? Behold, the feet of them which have buried your man are at the door and shall carry you out. 
Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up her ruach, spirit. And the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her man. And great fear came upon all the called out assembly, and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Shalamo's, Shalama, rather, Shalama's porch. Solomon, Shalama's porch. And of the rest dared no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to El Yahua, multitudes, both of men and women, so much so that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Kepha passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities, round about unto Yerushalayim, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean ruach cough, and they were healed every one. Then the high priest rose up, and all that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadokim, and were filled with indignation. So now what does that mean here? You've got the Sadducees, the Sadokim, a sect of the Yahudim at the time of Yahusha. I'm busy recording, sorry, who were usually at variance with the other leading, thank you, with the other leading sect, namely the Parashim, but united with them in opposing Yahushua and accomplishing his death, Matayahu 16, 1 through 12, Lucas 20, 27. The name would seem to be derived from an Arit word signifying the just, but the Talmudists affirm that it comes from a certain Sodak or Sadducus, who was the founder of the sect and lived about three centuries before the coming of Hamashiach, the Sodakim disregarded all the traditions and unwritten laws which Parashim prized so highly and professed to consider the scriptures as the only source and rule of the Yehudic religion, which is good. <laughs> they rejected the demonology of the Parashim, uh, deny the existence of angels and spirits. Well, see, that's not good. That's obviously the, the scriptures teach all that. Considered the soul and dying with the body and, of course, admitted no future state of reward and punishments, which the scriptures would teach all that. So, most of that. So, you got to read the scriptures. Don't go follow men. Follow the word. Um, and then the high priest rose up. Okay. So here we go. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadokim, Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles. And the word apostles means, it means, um, literally it says there, shoot of a tree, or shoot of a branch. So it's not this vague thing, it's a shoot of a branch or a vine branch. Well, a shoot of a branch is the baby part coming out. And laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of Yahuwah, angel means messenger, but the angel of Yahuwah by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard it, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the, high, but the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Yasharel, and sent to the prison to have them bought, brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. 
then when the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, rather, then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Kepha and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey Yah rather than men. Then Elohim of our fathers raised up Yahusha, rather Yahusha, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him has Yahuwah exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Yasharel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Ruach HaKadosh, whom Yah has given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Then stood there up one in the council, a parashi, Pharisee, named Gamaliel, a doctor of the Torah, had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them, Ye men of Yasharel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Theodoc, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this, man rose up Yahuda of Galil in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of Elohim, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against Elohim. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Yahushua, or rather, Yahusha, Yahshua, Yahshua. No, they pronounce it, I pronounce it Yahshua, uh, Yahshua, but they pronounce it here, they have it Yahusha, 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 and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Yahusha Hamashiach. Okay, so now continuing. That's kind of neat the way the Spirit will have us learn a little something over there. So here we go. Now, Continuing from here, again, also by God's grace, I am currently, and I'm not anymore, a student studying organizational leadership at Biola University and a ministry intern at Calvary Chapel Oceanside. Both programs are a tremendous blessing in my walk with the Lord. Finally, through the power of His Word and His Holy Spirit, God recently delivered me from my more than 20-year addiction to sex through the free Bible-based and Christ-centered course at settingcaptivesfree.com. I won't even recommend that anymore. Glory to Yah. It says glory to God, but glory to Yah. Watch the video. Hallelujah. You may be wondering why I'm willing to share such personal, personal and shameful details with you. It's because God's word, Yah's word, says... They overcame by giving witness about Jesus to others. 
They were willing to risk their lives, even if it led to death. Revelation 12, 11. Furthermore, Jesus said, Yahshua said, You will be my witnesses from one end of the earth to the other. Acts 1, 8. Again, those verses, go look them up. Research yourself what they really say. Still a sinner. Of course, today I'm not perfect. I am still a sinner and often stumble in my walk with the Lord. Actually, I stumble a lot less now. I used to say when I was uh, I, I became saved that uh, I'm, I, although I'm not sinless, I certainly sin less. And I'd rather walk with the Lord, or I'd rather walk with Yah, than run with Satan. Or the devil. I'd rather walk with Yah than run with the devil. <laughs> That's scary stuff, though, when you run with the devil. Mm. It is only by God's grace I am still alive today. Today I have faith in my Lord Jesus Christ. No, I don't. I have faith in my Yah, Yahshua Mashiach, to help make me more and more like him. I am sure that the one who began a good work in you will carry it on until it is completed. That will be on that day Christ Jesus returns. Philemon, or Philippians 1.6, from David Christian, or Dave Christian. Now, let's find out what that actually says. Um, I think it's Philippians 1.6. And... Um, if you don't like doing this type of research where, you know, the video's long and stuff, this channel's not for you. <laughs> We're going to go through the whole word of, of Yah. Um, the whole scriptures, 87 books. Um, and so if you don't like long videos, you don't like to dig into the word, then this is not your channel. So let's see about Philippians. And we'll look up 1.6 to see what that verse says, and then we'll do some more, a couple more things here, as the Spirit leads. Philippians, we need to get to 1, it's on Philippians 4 right now, I'm going to put this here. Okay. Philippium, Philippians 4, but we need 1, so I'm scrolling to the right, if you notice I'm just tapping, going to number 1, okay, there's number 1, and then 6. But um, I like to read it in context. Otherwise, Satan steals truth from us. So, one, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Yahusha Hamashiach, to all the Kodeshim in Yahushua Hamashiach, which are at Philippi with the overseers and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from Yahuwah, our Father, and from the Adonai Yahusha Hamashiach. Ah, Adonai. See, that's instead of Lord. It's Prince ruling with authority. So, I trust in my Adonai Yahuwah, Yahshua. I say Yahshua. Uh, Adonai Yahshua Hamashiach. That's who I trust in now. Is my Adonai Yahshua Hamashiach. And that is the... Prince ruling with authority, Yahusha, the anointed Messiah, or Yahshua, the anointed Messiah, Hamashiach, the anointed Messiah. That's what it means, anointed Messiah. But Yahshua means Yah is salvation. And that doesn't even say it in this one. So isn't that something? You gotta, you gotta know scripture. You can't just trust in one man-made system. You, that's why it's from faith to faith. You have to let the Holy Spirit, the dedicated spirit, the Ruach HaKadesh, guide you into all truth. And sometimes that means coming out of a system that you thought was the ultimate man-made system that God made. But in reality, it's just another system that's going to keep you in deception. Like if this Etzefer, if there was another system that came along that Yah improves upon, I will jump out of this one and go into it. And go into another system. I'm not, I'm not uh, held into any man-made system. Yah will lead me like he did the Yahudim in the desert with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. 
It's time to pitch your tent with, with Yah. You want to pitch your tent, which is what it means to be a disciple. It's to pitch your tent with Elohim, with, with your Creator. And so pitch your tent with Yah. And when he says it's time to move the tent, move that tent in faith. He'll correct you if it's wrong. If you were deceived by Satan, he will correct you back where you need to be. Trust him. Don't trust me. Don't trust any other man. Don't trust any of these teachers that they teach you out of the King James. They think they know the truth and they're telling you and they don't even know they're deceived. It's the blind leading the blind. They'll both fall into a ditch. And I'm praying for you guys. I'm praying that you guys will come out from the world and come out from the, the mystery Babylon and from all Roman Catholic systems, including the King James Bible. You guys, the Illuminati have the King James Bible in the center of their temples. They look at that as part of their masterful plan. It was a masterful plan created by King James to get everyone that thought they were getting out of the Roman Catholic system, jumping into the King James Bible, they didn't know they're being deceived too. Research this out, you guys. This is serious stuff here. Major deceptions. The granddaddy of them all. The King James Bible. Oof. Grace be unto you and peace from Yahuwah, our Father, and from the Adonai Yahushua, or Yahushua, Yahusha. I don't know how they pronounce it. I, I say Yahshua because the name Yah is in there. Um, but however they have it, that, you know, again, I feel led by the Spirit to say Yahshua. Because I, the, reveal, the revelation is that God's name is Yah. And so Yahshua is Yah is salvation. Now, it, it's probably correct, too, to be Yahusha, but Yahusha, Yahusha, maybe I'll learn to start saying that. See, I, as the Spirit leads me, I correct things. Adonai Yahusha Hamashiach. I thank my Yah upon every remembrance of you. Always, in every prayer of mine, for all, rather for you all, making request with joy for your fellowship in the Besara from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Yahusha Hamashiach. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart. Inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the Besara, ye are all partakers of my grace. Now what is Besara? The gospel. <gasps> wow. The Besara. A primitive root properly to be fresh, i.e. full, rosy, figuratively, cheerful, to announce glad news, messenger, preach, publish, show forth, bear, bring, carry, preach, good, tell good news. Besara. That's much better than gospel. Wow. For Yah is my record. How greatly I long after you all in the tender mercy of Yahusha Hamashiach. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in judgment, rather in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Hamashiach, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Yahusha Hamashiach, unto the glory and praise of Yahuwah. But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the Besara, so that my bonds in Hamashiach are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in Yahuwah, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. 
Some indeed preach Hamashiach, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Hamashiach of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the Besara. What then? Notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Hamashiach is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. For I know that this shall turn to my Yahshua through your prayer and the supply of the Ruach, Yahusha, Hamashiach, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Hamashiach shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me, to live is Hamashiach, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose I know not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Hamashiach, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of belief, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Yahusha, Hamashiach, for me, by me, rather, for me, by my coming to you again. Through these videos. Only let your conversation be as it becomes the Basara of Hamashiach, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, that I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one Ruach, with one mind, striving together for the belief of the Besara, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of Yahshua, and that of Yahuwah. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Mashiach, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which ye saw in me and now here to be in me. Now, before we close, let's find out what else is on the internet here that might make you deceived. I'm going to research with you. Uh, and this is what I recommend you do whenever you're going to want to research someone. Go ahead and find out, uh, put their name in parentheses. And we'll go ahead and put first to start with David Yah. Now, keeping in mind here that my search results will be different than your search results because Google aggregates the results based on your location as well as your previous search results. And by the way, I used to work for Google, and but Yah brought me out of that system a, a long time ago. Well, not a long time ago, about a, about a year ago, maybe two years now, or it could be three years now. I don't know. It's been a while, maybe three years. But um, it was in uh, Tempe, Arizona, where I worked for Google. Um, and I just share this with you so you know that I'm not some, you know, just making stuff up here, uh, you know, coming with no experience. I come to you with a lot of experience, worldly experience worldly wisdom so-called beyond imagination to the point of where I founded my own social science called Helpology, which I don't even recommend. I don't make money with this. I'm not here to try to earn income. I don't need any income from anyone. I'm a disabled Marine Iraq war vet. I don't need income. I get enough income from my VA disability to support myself and to do this ministry. I don't have to be anywhere. Yah has blessed me. I can do this full time. Um, so I'm just letting you know, glory to Yah. So here we go. My account, okay, this is what happens when you look up David Yah. Now, there's only one David Yah that looks like me probably. So just keep in mind, if there's another David Yah that doesn't look like this, it's not me. <laughs> because it was only recently that Yah had me change my name to David Yah. Now, 
Uh, as we look down, we'll see David Yan, David Yahaya, David Yahel. Okay, it doesn't look like there's other David Yahs necessarily on Facebook. But I let you know, I'm not on Facebook anymore. I used to be quite a bit. But about a year or two ago, about a year ago, Yah, at the time, it was God, told me to just come out from her, my people. And so Yah had me leave Facebook completely. I deleted everything, shut it all down. Um, but the thing is, is um, he doesn't call everyone to do that. There's, you know, you can communicate very effectively through Facebook. But for me, it was more of a purity thing where Yah was showing me to set myself apart for ministry purposes. Um, now we can look on David Yah profiles on LinkedIn. There's a David Yah, another David Yah. That's not me. Canada construction, Morado era Mexico, student at French in Normandy, not me. David Yah operations manager. See, these David Yahs are not me. None of them are me. I am not uh, on. LinkedIn as David Yah. However, I am on LinkedIn as David Dave Christian. So we'll look for that now. Again, I'm not going to look up David Yah anymore. Um, because again, my name was recently changed. So now that you know about that, when you research it, if you do research it, uh, you don't even have to research it. I'm just showing you maybe after this. Again, I'm just teaching you these things so then you don't get misled by Satan if you start seeing something out there where, like I remember doing one research for my name, David Christian or Dave Christian. In fact, I'll look up Dave Christian because that's what I, would, I used to go by. And I found one website that was run by a Roman Catholic uh, like charity or service and they put my testimony on there like I was a Catholic. And I'm not. And I was like, ah, slippery. Very tricky trying to make people think that I'm Roman Catholic when I am not. So let's look up Dave Christian Helpology. Because this is going to, there's a lot of David Christians and Dave Christians in the world. But this will show you me. And again, I don't recommend Helpology. I'm just showing you for testimonial purposes of what I came out from. Dave, Dave, Christ, Dave Christian's Helpology. Look, I had a heart and a cross as the logo for Helpology, which again, I don't recommend the cross anymore. I, I believe it was a stake or a pole or a tree, what the scriptures would teach throughout. Um, I think that the cross is, became something from the pagans and the Greek system to make you think the cross uh, was like that, when in reality, I believe it was a stake or a pole. Now, you know, that even sounds heretical. It's like, no, the blood of Jesus Christ and the cross of Christ, that's what saves. And it's like, well, you know what? It's the blood of Messiah. And if it was a cross or a pole or a stake, but if it was just a pole or a stake, but you're believing in the cross and it's like pagan, maybe you're the one that's deceived and not me. Keep in mind, I used to be like you. I came out of it. If you're still in it, that means you haven't come out of it yet. Don't be afraid to come out of it. You can always go back to Babylon if you're not comfortable with the truth. Now, what does it say here? Dave Christian's Helpology. You can research that on your own. Again, I don't even recommend you do because it's not something I recommend. I wouldn't buy the book. Um... It's for sale, but I don't recommend it. It's through Amazon. Again, researching that on your own, there's um, Dave Christian's Helpology on Create Space. That's where I used to create the book through Amazon's Create Space. Again, I'm not going to even drill down into any of these things because I don't think it's worth our time to, but you can on your own if you want to. But again, I do not recommend my book, either Helpology. Dave Christian's Helpology, I do not recommend it. And I don't recommend my first book I wrote under the pen name Dominic Ficini. When I use my middle name from Peter Lewis Dominic Ficini, I use my middle name Dominic, my last name Ficini. You'll find How to Gain Love, Respect, Happiness, Health, and Wealth, Personal Perfection of Your Mind by Dominic Ficini. I don't recommend that. Certainly not. I wrote it as an atheist. So 
Again, and I don't recommend Helpology because I wrote that as a born-again Christian thinking Christianity was the end-all truth. And it wasn't even with the King James Bible, nonetheless. So don't, uh, don't get mis misled into these, you know, we're always jumping on from black square to white square. We're trying to get off the black squares, which are lies, onto the white squares, which is truth. Well, funny thing about the Illuminati is in their halls of worship, their temples, they got black and white square tiles all over. And when you see black and white square tiles, that's Illuminati symbolism. And what they do is they got you jumping from square to square thinking there's all these black and white squares, truth and lies, truth and lies, when in reality there's only one truth. Everything else is a black square. Everything else is a black square. There's only one truth. And that is Yah. Chew on that one. <laughs> Chew on that one. There's only one white square. And that is you're going to have to get in touch with the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, the dedicated spirit is the only pure white square truth that you're going to have. That's why it says the just or the righteous shall live by faith. You're going to have to go from faith to faith through the power of the Holy Spirit or the Ruach HaKadosh to get you to go from truth to truth because there isn't going to be any man-made system that exists today that is going to be pure truth. It's just the way it is. Now, the scriptures, when they were written in Aramaic Hebrew, you're going to see, uh, I recommend Alan Horvath, Horvath. Oh, he's got the Odeote. He's going to show you the images that Messiah himself wrote with. Oh, it's beautiful. And those writings don't exist anymore. So that's why you need the Spirit. Now, I used to think like King James Version where, oh, that's the perfect translation for English. I don't think so anymore. Not even close. It's missing books. It's using names like Lord Jesus Christ. Again, research this on your own. It's a study. Uh, once you come out of it, you're going to be like, wow, what a lie and what a system to have so much truth in it, about 80% truth and then they have this other 20 percent that is just it's pagan filth again don't be deceived to think oh you know i'm gonna stop uh listening to this guy because he's talking against my king james bible are you worshiping the bible are you worshiping that king james bible instead of the the spirit of your creator if you build your whole life on a ministry founded on the king james bible are you willing to exodus out of it are you? Or not? Now, here's something I would check out just to kind of see. This is true. There was a newspaper article written. Sterling Heights native establishes... Again, I'm sharing this with you not to toot my own horn. It's to let you know where I've come from, what I've come out of. It's what a testimony is. It's not to say, hey, look at me, what I did. I count this all as dung. I don't recommend any of this. I recommend watching what I share with you on my YouTube channel now. But this is what Yah has had me come out from. Now, Sterling Heights native establishes social, social science called Helpology by Deborah Kazbuski, June 8th, 2010. And this is when I was an educator. I was a, I was a third, second, and first grade teacher at Nashville Global Academy. And former Sterling Heights resident Dave Christian, who changed his name from Pete Ficini, developed a Christian-based social science called Helpology. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing. If you want to read this, I, like I say... I don't recommend what my stuff, what I used to do, uh, because even what I used to do, coming out of it, it was another black square I jumped onto. Helpology.org, I've shut down. If you go to it, it's not going to be my website. See, it's probably for sale if you want it. Um, you only got a couple months. 
left to do anything. Actually, you're going to have a couple months before the great sign, and then after that, you'll have about three and a half years of peace, maybe, and prosperity. Where I'm not even sure about that. We'll see. Time will tell. Again, we're not date setting, but Yah is date setting. So at this point, I'm not going to keep researching stuff to tell you about it because it's really all moot. It doesn't matter. What I do recommend now, as of this point, would be my YouTube channel, David Yah, where we focus on, focus on what saith the scripture, and we're in the Et Sefer. Um, we're going to go through, I'm going to show you the playlists, and then we'll end it. The playlists, I put videos, you know, the liked videos, I share those. Again, there's lots of videos that I like, but I don't necessarily recommend them per se, because there's others that are more helpful than those that I like. And so those get migrated into these other playlists. Um, and that would be the dedicated book. The dedicated book, you're going to find that is the playlist for the Et Sefer. Yah has called me to record the whole Et Sefer, 87 books. And so Yah willing, listen to it through Genesis, through Revelation. You're going to get the whole counsel of Yah's word. I start with Hallelujah. I'll probably put in there this testimony video, but I'm not sure. Um, but then also you'll start to see where it starts. The Bereshith, Genesis 1 through, right now, I think I just finished Genesis. It was 1 through 50 chapters. And that's one book out of 87. So Yah's having me read some every day. And so we'll see if we get to finish it even before his glorious return. Matthew 6.22 sign. Um, definitely recommend watching that because that's going to give you tangible proof that I'm being used by Yah in these end times. You're not going to be able to deny these miracles he's shown me. Watch the Matthew 6.22 sign and then do it. Watch the nailed video. Pray. Watch the peppercorn video. Pray. Listen to the sure mercies of David. Listen to blind. Listen to you shall save both yourself and them that hear you. And wherever this video that I'm recording right now, the David Yah testimony, that's going to be thrown into some of these. If not, uh, I don't know, maybe all of them. I don't know. I put it in the playlist so in case someone just goes right to a playlist only. You'll notice it always has uh, like the first video and the last video are the same in the playlists. Because I know human nature or people's nature, man's nature, sometimes they just jump in and they don't look at everything. And so I make sure that the most important things they need to know, the first and last videos that I have in these playlists are in all the playlists. And so repetition is the mother of skill. They use this, you know, worldly belief system. But it's also, that's the truth. Um, but um, even that, I don't know. It's not in God's, Yah's word, so I wouldn't trust that even. Matthew 6, 22, sign, now living water. You know what? This is urine therapy. Ew, oh my gosh, it's nasty. You know what? You're going to get cancer and get sick because you think it's nasty. They've got you brainwashed, dumbed down into thinking, oh, that's disgusting. You know what? It's not. Watch these videos. Get, brain, get out of the brainwash, okay? Urine therapy, top three reasons to drink your own urine. It's healthy for you, beyond belief. You have no idea. All these witnesses. Look, you only need two or three witnesses to establish the truth. Look how many witnesses are on here. Watch their videos. And if you want to keep living in your sickly state where you're ill and sick and wheezing and coughing and getting cancer and all these problems, then you can keep doing that. <laughs> you know, it's like, before you start not helping yourself, why don't you at least do some research, test something out scientifically yourself for a little bit, and then you'll see why other people are doing it. Um, i just sometimes disgusted by how Satan has affected so many people, including most people in my life that are dear to me, to where they're not even open-minded to try something that's going to save their life, give them more energy to do, feel wonderful, and to be able to do ministry. Now, they'd rather slowly die in front of the satanic television and as they go to hell. It's their choice. Twelve vine branches. Now there's 14 videos because I have a first video and a last video that I have in there, but the twelve vine branches, Yah put on my heart that um, at first it was called twelve disciples, then twelve taladium, 
parentheses, disciples. And then Yah showed me through one of Alan Horvath's, teach, Horvath's teachings about what the disciple literally means is a shoot of a branch, a shoot of a branch, where it's like a little thing that starts to sprout out. That's what a disciple is. Well, then Yah told me, put their vine branches because he is the, we are the branches, he is the vine, he's the true vine. So he told me to put that as the symbolism for my playlist of the 12 vine branches, which are also the only 12 that I subscribe to. Now there's other things that I like, videos that I'll watch, music I'll listen to, that I would subscribe to if there was room. But I'm only, Yaz telling me to only subscribe to 12. And then that way it keeps me accountable and it also keeps making the list of 12 vine branches more and more powerful, meaning more and more helpful. I'm going to, I mean, these teachers that Yaz had me bring together, amazing, unbelievable. Until you start watching them, you're not going to have any idea what you're missing. God's roadmap to the end. Let's see here. Quickly look. There's that first Hallelujah video. Gotta watch that, you guys. And, and just watch it with an open mind. Um, but again, for the 12 vine branches, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you. That also love one another. Rather, that you also... Well, I can't see it here. That ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my Talmudium disciples, if ye have love one to another. Yahu Chanan, John 13, 34 through 35 at Sefer. Uh, I love you, my family. If I can help you in any way, just let me know. Shalom, hallelujah, your servant, Brother David Yah. And there's my address. If you want to write to me, there's my email. Please feel free to email me, text or call me, 586-330-1305. Um, I'll go ahead and read the, the, the address out in case you have to hear it and you can't see it. Uh, David Yah, D-A-V-I-D, and then all caps, Y-A-H. Address, 23720 Denton Street, apartment 9B, Clinton Township, Michigan 48036-3477 USA. Email whatsayeththescripture8 at gmail.com. Text or call 586-330-1305. P.S. My Abba Yah changed my name from David Christian to David Yah. 628-2017 at 5.33 p.m. P.S. I love you, my family. If I can help you in any way, just let me know. Your servant, Brother David Yah. Shalom. Hallelujah.